how's it going? Welcome to Off Camber. My name's Alfred. If you've been with the channel before, welcome back. If you're new, well, hopefully you like what you see and maybe watch future content. But for my guys who've seen this before, you already know this Jeep behind me. It's my 2012 Jeep Wrangler. And I've been going through and building it up and doing a lot of the body armor on it. Because I've already done the fenders, front and rear, and I've already done the tire carrier. Bumpers are a little bit later down the line. We'll get to it for sure. But today we'll be working on protecting the rockers because as you guys can tell it's a lot of surface area of unprotected sheet metal and for the guys and girls like playing in the rocks as much as i do we all know that sheet metal definitely can't take a beating and if you leave this area unprotected you're either gonna be fixing body damage yourself or paying someone else to do it so for me i'm gonna be a little proactive i got a product that i'm about to throw on the jeep today that's hopefully gonna protect this area so let's get started And before we get started installing the rocker guards from Motobuilt, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these doors off. Because, well, number one, it's just going to be a lot easier to work around if they're off. So I have to keep walking around both the back and front doors. And hopefully it gives you guys a better picture of how these actually go together, just so it's not, you don't have a door obstructing your view. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then we're going to get going on the actual install. For the install, it is possible for one person to do it, but if you had a friend or maybe you know, a significant other to help you out, it definitely makes a world of difference. But today it's just going to be me and three of these uh, compression clamps are going to help me out for this. So now we got the rocker clamped to the body of the Jeep. Now we're gonna go through and uh, check for distances because Motobuilt says you need about a quarter inch between the uh, top of the rocker guard and the door jam. So with my eyeballs, I think I got it to be about quarter of an inch, but we'll take a ruler and see if we have any adjusting to do. With the rocker guard installed with a uh, quarter inch of gap between the guard and the door jam, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mark out some holes. So the first holes we're gonna mark out is the uh, forward's most hole and the uh, aft most hole in the guard. And what we're going to do is we'll mark out those holes and take the guard off. And then we'll drill eighth of an inch up to 25 60 force, and that's in preparation for rib nuts. Once we get those two rib nuts installed, we'll put the guard back on, install the hardware, and start marking out the rest of the holes. So it's going to be take it off, install, take it off, install. But that's just so we actually have a good point, because you don't want your rib nuts to be off, because then you're going to be trying to fight it. And if you dealt with rib nuts before, it's kind of one of those things that even if you're off by like a sixteenth of an inch, it tends to go in a lot harder. So we'll just be slow, uh, we'll be methodical, and we'll hopefully get it right on the first try. So. So now we got our two holes drilled out to 25 60 force and we're ready to install the rib nut. And as a word of advice, I would say if you don't have a 25 60 force drill bit, just go out and buy one. Just because it's a lot easier if you just have the right bit to start out with because if you go too large of a hole, you have run the risk of as soon as you add torque to these, um, they just spin because there's these ridges and if there's not enough material there for those to bite into, there's, it's just gonna free spin. And if you try and go smaller and use like a file or like a rotary tool to enlarge the hole, then you're just, you have high spots and low spots and you kind of run the same issue. So just get the drill bit. And, and along with that, I would say, get yourself a, a rib nut tool, just because it's gonna make the job go by a lot faster. And you can actually add a lot of torque to this and actually seat this uh, real tight against the sheet metal. 
Uh, this one uh, is actually from a Harbor, is from Harbor Freight. I think I only paid like 50 bucks for it. And it came with like different sizes for both metric and standard. So the size we're gonna be using for the rib nut on this one is uh, a quarter 20. So I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do to actually get the uh, rib nut installed into the body. So what we're gonna do, we'll take our rib nut tool and we'll open up the legs to it. And we'll take our rib nut and we'll thread it on until it fully seats on this arbor. And we'll add, we'll add some thread locker to this, just give it some extra bond and prevent it from, if it does want to try and slip, it hopefully it kind of prevents it from doing so. So with that, using some thread locker, what we're gonna do is we're insert it into the body until it's flat and with some pressure against it. What we'll do is we'll start pulling these arms tight. It's going to take a little force. And then as soon as we get the full good clamp, what we'll do is we'll open it up, spin this off. Wipe that away. Now we got a rib nut installed into the Jeep. And now we're ready to do the front one. With both rib nuts installed on the body, I place the guard onto the Jeep and thread the provide bolts into these rib nuts, making sure that the guard is tight to the body. Now with a hammer and a punch, I go to each hole and make a dimple into the Jeep. This will help center my drill bit and prevent it from drifting while I drill. When drilling these holes, I started out first with an eighth inch drill bit and moved up to a quarter inch. After that, I removed the guard and finished each hole at 25 64 and with the rest of the holes all drilled out, we're ready to install the rib nuts. This is where this $50 tool really does shine and pays for itself. Now we have all the rib nuts installed. Our next step to do now is we'll take the rocker guard and throw it back into the body of the Jeep and start installing all the hardware. And when we install the hardware, we'll get them all loosely installed like by a couple of threads. And what we'll do is we'll progressively tighten it down until the rocker guard meets the body all about the same time. What you don't want to do is just tighten down all the hardware at one end and start working your way forwards, backwards, or whatever. You run into the potential of creating a, a bind point between the uh, bolt and the rib nut. And anytime the bolt gets kind of bound up when it tries to go into a rib nut those rib nuts only are being held on by friction by a clamping force because it clamps onto the sheet metal but if you create a, a situation where you're basically trying to put, force that bolt into that rib nut nine times out of ten what's going to happen is you're just going to cause that rib nut to break free from the sheet metal and then you're, now you're in a situation where you have to rip off the rocker guard again try and install another one or if you have access to a weller try and tack it on and doing the process all over again. So we're just gonna be slow. We'll make sure that the rock guard evenly tightens down to the body of the Jeep, and then we'll install the next component for this rocker guard system. As a reminder, do not over torque these bolts. About 10 foot pounds should be plenty enough to hold. After everything is installed, I also recommend adding anti-seize to each one of these bolts to add with additional lubrication along with corrosion prevention. Depending on where you live can really determine the difficulty of removing these body bolts. Fortunate enough for me, rust isn't a factor on this Jeep, so these bolts came out without any issue. This is the final component to the Motorbuilt Rocker Guard system. 
After we place this onto the previous installed guard, we'll go back through and loosely install the body bolts. After that, we'll move back to the top side and install the remaining hardware. And that completes the install of the uh, Crusher Rock Guards from Moto Built. Now the reason why I'm with the, these Rock Guards is because, well, if you guys can't tell already, I'm already running everything else that's Moto Built from the fenders, the tire carrier, and soon is going to be the uh, bumpers front and rear. Now the reason why I want Moto Built's Rock Guards is because it's pretty seamless with how they manufacture their products because the fenders are made to fit with the rock sliders, which are made to fit with the bumpers. So that's the reason why I went with them. Now there's three different styles of rock guards out there that you potentially could get. Um, so there's frame mounted, there's this style that utilizes the body bolts along with the um, mounts up here on the tub. And then there's a third style of rock guard where it's acts probably more so as a step, but it utilizes just the body bolts. Your strongest option is gonna be the frame mounted sliders. And that's because there's no point of movement in there. They're literally welded directly to the frame, they come out, and they provide a guard to keep your body away from rocks. Uh, the only way it's ever gonna move is if you hit something really hard, but then again, you're probably gonna have frame damage at that point. But there's very little movement just because it's, it's very rigid. Now this style right here, where it utilizes the uh, body bolts along with some bolts along up to the tub, is your second strongest. Uh, there's points of movement in it just because you're utilizing body bolts, so you get a piece of rubber there so rubber itself is inherently uh, flexible but you have bolts that come up back up to the body and add a little bit more rigidity so it doesn't have that ability to go upwards because it's being prevented by the uh, these other bolts and your and your third strongest option or should i say the weakest are the um, guards that are just utilize the body bolts now some companies out there call them a rock guard but at the end of the day they're typically more utilized as a step and the reason why is because if you hit a rock, there's nothing preventing those body bolts from number one bending or number two having that rubber deflect upwards. And in all honesty, I've seen vehicles where those steps cause more damage to the body because now it's forcing a piece of tube along the entire length of the vehicle because it's rigid. So instead of having one point of impact, you have a whole side impact on the rocker. And when I originally got this Jeep, that's what it originally had on it, but I knew that was never gonna you know, stay, and I had plans on doing something similar to this. So do I think the Rock Guards from Motor Built are a good option? I think they're built really well, really strong, you know, 316s plate, the welds look really nice, it's, it's gusseted all the way through, but my big worry is gonna be the rib nuts. Um, I'm not a fan of rib nuts, um, just because you're taking material and crimping it on sheet metal and sheet metal itself is inherently not strong we'll see how long these hold up after taking some major hits from you know bigger rocks because my worry is if i hit rocks down here and it's transferring all that force upwards who knows if those rivets are going to actually hold but who knows maybe these will hold up and i'll never have to change them out so for the install for you guys this is kind of like the point where you know you'll probably be good a few other things i need to do to these rock sliders before i can you know actually move on to the next project so obviously with power coat, I get these power coated, but before I gotta do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece off the, uh, back off the Jeep, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some 3M tape along the outside of the perimeter, just because when I stick it back on, just prevent any rocks, dirt, debris, moisture from actually getting trapped behind it. And then I'll throw it all back together once I get this back from power coat. 
And if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. But if there's anything that you know you disliked about this video or maybe things I could be doing better, please leave it in the comments because I'm still pretty new to YouTube. I'm still pretty new at trying to film and work on things at the same time. So, but yeah, if there's anything that maybe I could be doing better or maybe doing less, please, yeah, go ahead and leave it in the comments. But this kind of wraps up this install of the, uh, the rock guard. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll get everything back and give you guys an update video. But hey, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next adventure.